Well, joining me here on the chancel steps is someone I hope you've had the opportunity to meet, and if you haven't, I want to make sure you have the opportunity to meet her today. Katie Murray is our Christian Advocacy Specialist uh, here at Wilshire, and uh, this is a three-year pilot program that we're doing uh, with the Cooperative Baptist Fellowship, trying to see what it's like to put a, a staff person in a congregational setting, working on issues of Christian advocacy and uh, learning from that. And actually, Katie was just in Atlanta this past week, uh, sort of uploading some information to them and training some others uh, from other places who are uh, working in, in this area. But apart from that, uh, Katie has a distinct honor that uh, I want you to know about, and that is that she is among the inaugural class of uh, BJC Fellows is the title. And this is um, a group that was selected by the Baptist Joint Committee on Public Affairs uh, in Washington, D.C., one of our partner agencies. And uh, Katie, tell us about the BJC Fellows and what does that mean and what do you do uh, as a BJC Fellow? Well, it was a real honor this summer to be selected into that inaugural class, like Mark said. It was a class of 10 uh, young professionals. Uh, the Baptist Joint Committee are our advocates for religious liberty in Washington, and they're working to bring up the new and next generation of religious liberty advocates. So I got to join other pastors, attorneys, and other profess professionals over um, in Williamsburg, Virginia, for a week and to study religious liberty and its founding in America, and in particular, the role that Baptists have historically um, played in that. And you were selected from a large group for this, and how many of you are there? Uh, there's 10 of us this year. Okay, well congratulations. Uh, we're really proud of you for doing that. Uh, so now that you're the expert on religious liberty, uh, it's gonna take a little pressure off George, I think. Uh, tell us, uh, Folks may not understand that Baptists were integral in the concept of religious liberty here in the founding of our country. How did that work out and what was the role that Baptists played there? Absolutely. There's kind of two different streams for why religious liberty is a founding principle for Baptists. The first is this idea of soul freedom or um, freedom of conscience, this idea that we are responsible to God alone for our faith and not to a government entity uh, for what faith that we choose. Another part of this is that we were a persecuted group in England and in the um, American colonies when we first came over here. Our pastors were thrown into jail, people weren't allowed to meet in church buildings just for um, many of the things that we talk about here on a Sunday morning. And so I think those two things together created um, Baptist advocates for religious liberty and they were integral in creating these um, first the freedoms we see in the First Amendment. In fact, legend says that John Leland, who was a pastor in Virginia at the time, um, actually met with James Madison and said, I will get the Baptists to vote for you if once you get to Congress, you um, create a Bill of Rights to supplement the, um, de the Declaration, the Constitution. And who knows if it's a good story, but it happened, so we're gonna take that. Yeah, so uh, Baptists, uh, in many ways, instrumental in the uh, creation of the Bill of Rights and these, these early founding uh, issues, and we can read a lot about that. Uh, so we had our Wilshire Adventurers group this past week in Washington, D.C., just coincidentally, and uh, we went to the Baptist Joint Committee, and they did an orientation for our group, and we got to uh, learn about their important work there, and one of the things in their presentation to us was, and I'll have to quiz some of the adventurers to see if you remember this, was about the five freedoms that we find in, in the in the. First Amendment uh, in, the Const in the Bill of Rights. So uh, refresh our memory for those who've not been in a U.S. history class recently. Five freedoms there, what are they? Quiz for me too. Um, freedom of religion, freedom of speech, freedom of the press, freedom to peacefully assemble, and freedom to petition the government. And our religious liberty claims are really embodied in the first of those. Uh, but uh, if you're keeping, uh, want to know how to understand this, we talk about our one Baptist history, we talk about five freedoms, and now we're going to talk about the two aspects of that religious liberty clause, that we've got the establishment clause and we've got the freedom of expression clause, and these things seem to work against each other. We've seen that sort of playing out in the news recently. Help us understand what those two parts of the First Amendment mean and how that ha comes to bear on religious liberty. So I think it's really important that we have both of those clauses. So the first is uh, that Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. And so Baptists were really, they played a strong role in making sure that both of those clauses were in there. The free exercise clause was one that the states started to put into their own constitutions fairly early on, um, but they kept having taxation 
put in there, that there would be taxes taken out for the established church. And the Baptists were very strong in saying, even if that money would go to the Baptists, that that was not okay. We've seen this week um, how some of that plays out, but it's important that those two are in tension, or that they are in tension, because I think it finds a good middle ground. First of all, that we can all be devoutly religious and that we can worship however we please, uh, but that no establishment clause means that there's no one faith that is put to bear on everyone else in the country. And so, so this is a hard much. thing for us as Baptists to be advocates for, right? Absolutely. To explain that uh, we as Baptists historically are about religious liberty for all people, not just for ourselves. Uh, any tips on how we can live that out? <laughs> With patience. No, I think this is really the crux of what we're talking about here. Um, because it's very easy when it's your own faith um, to be in support of it. But religious liberty is something where we value it so much for ourselves that we're going to give it to another person, even if they don't believe the same thing that we do. Um, and so it's hard because we have to put sometimes our own um, views aside. But because we value it so much in our own life, we want it for everyone. And as soon as we take it away from someone else, it's only a matter of time before it's taken away from us as well. And so I think our, our history of persecution is so important to remember in this because it'll help us um, stay that middle ground. Well, thank you. Beautifully said. And again, congratulations <laughs> on this appointment that you have. And we'll look forward to learning more from you and direct all your questions to Katie. Now. <laughs>